In this video, I'll start installing PFSense on VirtualBox step by step. I'm on my VirtualBox screen and on VirtualBox, you can see these are different machines that were created and I can create the new machine by clicking here. But before that, I need to download the installation media. So I'll go to PFSense and I'll look for the PFSense, which is world's most trusted open source firewall. I'll click on download. And in download, you can see here, these are the options. So select image to download. I'll be choosing this version and architecture. You will be choosing AMD 64 bit. Now these two options are there. First option is for you to download for any machine of your choice, which could be your virtual appliance or it could be your hardware appliance. So I'll be choosing AMD 64 bit. And second option, which is there is for NetGate. NetGate is the hardware appliances by PFSense, but we'll be using our own hardware, our own virtual appliance. So what we'll do, we'll choose AMD 64 bit and select here whether it is for the USB memstick installer or DVD image. I'll be choosing the DVD image if I'm downloading it for the virtual machine or virtual appliance. So I'll be uploading this. Otherwise, if I want to make the USB bootable image, so I'll be using USB memstick installer. So then you can choose whether it is serial or VGA. So we'll be choosing DVD image and click on download. All right, you can see here download has completed here. This is the ISO image that we have downloaded. I'll be creating the virtual machine now where I'll be installing the PFSense. In order to create the virtual machine, you have two options here. You can click on machine here on the menu and click on new. Otherwise, on the main screen here, you can also click on new here. I'll be using menu option here. I'll click on menu and new. And here I'll be giving it a name called PFSense. ISO image, of course, I have already downloaded the ISO image uh, just now. So we'll be locating that ISO image. PFSense CE 2.7.0 release AMD 64 bit. Here type, it is built on BST. So you have to choose the operating system type here, which will be BST as we have already downloaded 64 bit. So we have to choose BST 64 bit from here and click next. Now here the base memory, it is by default showing me 1 GB or 1024 MB. Uh, it needs minimum 512 MB of RAM depending upon where you are going to install it and how many applications you are going to install on PFSense. So of course, uh, right now uh, it is just for the lab purpose where I'll be using uh, these virtual machines to be communicating to the internet using the PFSense. So I'll be using fine 1024 MB, which is one GB of RAM with one processor. I can move it to two processor also if you want. It is fine, but uh, one is also fine. And then you'll click next here. Now you can see here this size, it shows me 16 GB. 16 GB will be a lot for this operating system. Uh, it needs uh, minimum one GB of the storage. Uh, but you can go more as well. So I'll be going for 8 GB of total storage. Once you are doing it for the production environment, you will need to have many logs also, which will be regularly stored in your hard drive. So depending upon how much data you want to carry and depending upon how many applications you want to install, you can go for more storage. But I'll be using 8 GB here for this particular lab. Then click next. Once you click next, you will see all the high level information. So which means that ISO image, which is being uh, attached will be ISO PFSense 2.7. And here you can see the free BSD is the guest OS type, uh, two processors, one GB of RAM and eight GB of the size. But here, one thing before we start installation of PFSense or before we start this virtual machine, we need to make sure we set up the network. As we know that we are going to use the PFSense as our firewall, as our gateway for the lab, which is my virtual box lab. So these all machines which are installed on virtual box, I want these machines to communicate with the internet, with the help of PFSense and PFSense will become it, their DHCP server, DNS server, gateway, router, firewall for all these machines. So which means that PFSense should have two network interface cards or two virtual networks. One of them will be connected to the internet using my Wi-Fi adapter or using my network adapter. 
and another will be using the virtual adapter which will be connected to these machines. If I click on settings of this particular virtual machine and if I click on network, you will see by default it is NATed. NAT means that it is directly connected using the host OS Wi-Fi adapter or network adapter. Through this Wi-Fi adapter, it is already connected to my network. And not only this, it is NATed, which means that I can do the port forwarding from this particular network to the virtual machine. Suppose if I click here and if I do port forwarding, I can do all the port forwarding from my guest IP to the PFSense, which means that any traffic that comes to my laptop IP can be forward it to the PFSense and then PFSense can internally forward it to the specific guest machine. Right now, I'll not be doing that, but this option is available here in adapter number one. So what will be adapter number two? I want to use second adapter for the internal network between all my virtual machines, which I already did earlier. All these machines are already using the internal network. So I'll be enabling another adapter for this also, and that will be internal. So you can see here internal network. Now my two adapters are configured. Mac address is here. Cable is connected. The adapter type is this. I'll click OK. Now if you see this particular VM is now ready to start the PFSense and uh, everything is fine. I'll be simply clicking on start. I'll just show you on the scaled mode here so that you can see in detail. And here you are. So virtual machine has started. So Right now, it is running directly from the ISO image PFSense installer. So we need to accept the license agreement. I'll enter accept. Here you can see whether you want to install the PFSense. I will install, of course, this is my installation. What will be the disk type? So whether you want to use auto ZFS, manual, shell, or auto UFS. I'll be using auto ZFS. It is fine. So I'll click next and OK. And here it shows me which disk you want to install to. I will just select this disk by pressing the space bar and press OK. It is asking me the confirmation whether you want to install it because all the data will be destroyed on ADA0, which is fine. I'll press yes. And now it will start installing. We'll wait for this process to complete. All right, so installation is completed now and it is asking me to reboot the system. I'll just press enter to reboot. Now my PFSense is installed. I will just power this off and I'll go here into settings. And in settings, I'll simply go to storage and remove this PFSense CD. You can see here this PFSense CD, which was used for the installation. So I'll be removing this attachment remove. Now only PFSense VDI, which is the virtual disk is available on PFSense. I'll click OK. Now I'll start this virtual machine. All right, so it will now load. Here you can see PFSense is now running from virtual disk on virtual box. And I'll wait for this initial boot to complete. As I mentioned, there will be two network interface cards. One will be used for internal, another will be used for external. So we need to decide here what will be the WAN interface and what will be the LAN interface. It has started setting up the DNS. All these services which are default will start running and right now you can see here it has given me the van which is em0 10.0.2.15 slash 24. So this is DHCP a NAT address which is automatically assigned to this through the NAT interface which we created here. This NAT will be automatically providing the IP address through its own internal range. LAN interface is this which is automatically configured. It has configured by itself. You don't need to do anything right now. But if in case you want to make any changes, you can do that. These all commands are there which I'll explain you in the next video. But here I'll show you shell. And in shell, I can simply access pinggoogle.com. Here you will see I'll be able to get the access to the internet. You can see here the response is coming, which means that PFSense is right now connected to the internet. I can simply exit this. So here on my virtual box, now these are all the machines which are already there. So this machine, which is Windows 10, if you see, I configured this as the network and it is connected to the internal network. 
So where is internal network in PFSense? If you see in PFSense, internal network is right now here, adapter 2. And this adapter 2 is already working as the DHCP server as well. So PFSense is already working as DHCP server. And that DHCP server is configured on port, which is internal port. And that internal port is connected to the network. You can see here to the internal network and this internal network is in fact the internal network of all these machines if i click to windows 10 machine here and if i go here to settings and if i see the network of this it is right now connected to internal network only one network is there all other interfaces are disabled so i'll just start windows machine now and i'll see if i'm able to get the ip address which is the pfsense ip address and which i have already seen 192.168.1.1 and the dhcp range will be also in the same one so we'll just see our windows machine now all right so here we are our windows machine has started i'll just simply log into the machine so if i show you ip config ip config slash all so you will see here it is getting the ip address of 192.168.1.100 and dns server and dhcp server is 1.1 of course i can access the dhcp server from here from the internet browser inside the virtual machine which is running in the virtual box and here connected through the local network to the pfsense 192.168.1.1 all right so user id is admin password is pfsense here you go the pfsense is now installed on oracle virtual box i can simply do the basic configuration of this click next so it will give you the information whether you want to use the support and all of that click next and here the host name i will say pfsense virtual box for example and the other information is fine you don't need to make any changes here initially we'll do the complete configuration in the next videos but this is only to help you to understand the lab here and next we'll run this wizard and lan ip address it is fine and admin password you can set up the admin password here to make sure that default is changed default was pfsense admin is the user and password is pfsense and here you go so click reload with the new changes i'll reload this license agreement accept so you are done here so version is virtual box shows you the cpu usage the memory usage and all the disk usage the WAN interface IP address, LAN interface IP address, and so on. Now, any machine that you create on Oracle VirtualBox will be getting the IP address from the PFSense which we have created on Oracle VirtualBox. So, Oracle VirtualBox has this PFSense as a gateway, as a router, as a firewall. This is one of the ways which you can use to configure PFSense. These machines can directly communicate to the internet directly by natting or directly by bridging to your port or directly through other network but we configured this to use the pfsense as our gateway internally we want these machines to internally communicate with the pfsense and only pfsense will be sending the internet traffic outside and pfsense will also help to protect all these virtual machines from the external attacks with the help of firewall so let us continue to the next video we'll now see how we can use other options to get started with PFSense.